question two then from the 2022 advanced higher paper one format question use gaussian elimination to solve this system of equations now it said use gaussian elimination because you could have just solved that algebraically that used to be at the start of the higher course several decades ago because it's just the same technique that you're used to with two equations in two variables you just take them in pairs and multiply and add them in order to get rid of one of the variables. The only thing is you'll have to do that twice so that you'll end up with two equations and two variables. And then you multiply and add them to get rid of one of those. Gaussian elimination is just that written in a concise form. So what you do is you just take the information here and the information just means these coefficients and values. So you take the information and put it into a matrix, a matrix of coefficients. So you've got one, negative two, one. Well, they're in that specific order, x, y, z. And then I've got a join where I put in this one, which is just a little column matrix of the values. Next, two, one, negative three. And 1, negative 7, negative 4. Now, doing that gets to the first mark. Creating the augmented matrix, the matrix of coefficients and values. Now, the technique you'd use to solve it is just the same technique that you would use algebraically. You add them in pairs. So this is going to transform. Now, watch when I'm doing this, though. This is going to transform into another matrix, which is really the same matrix. I'm just altering this matrix. I'm taking these rows and I'm replacing them with other rows, but I don't want to do it there. So this is a copy of it, just for neatness, if you like. So the technique's going to be, in order to eliminate them, because remember what you do is you get rid of two variables, then you get rid of one of the other ones. You want to get it into upper triangular form. You want it to end up looking like this. You want this part here, this little square matrix, that's the main diagonal, 1, 1, negative 4. You want that to be in upper triangular form. What that means is you've got the entries in the main diagonal, you've got entries up here, that's the upper triangle, but you've got nothing down here. You've got zero entries down here. And the first stage in that would be get these two to zero. So I'm going to use the elementary row operations, which are equivalent to these algebraic operations. But I'm going to leave that first row alone. There's nothing wrong with that. So these two I want to be zeros. So, just as here you'd have said, well, how can I get rid of the x's? Well, if I added, if I took this and doubled that one and subtracted them, the x's would disappear. It's the same here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take row two. When I say row two here, I don't mean this row two. This refers to the matrix that I've got written here, the original one. I'm going to take this row two and transform that into that row two minus two lots of row one. Whoops, that's not very neat. And But write the answer here though, instead of rubbing that out and writing it there. So you just do that then. Two, take away two is zero, because that's the whole point. I want upper triangular form. I want these three to be zeros. One, but plus four, that'll be a five. Negative three, take away two, negative five. Three, take away eight, Negative 5. Well, that can get knocked down. Same here. I'm going to replace this row 3 with, just add on, I'm subtract the first one, that would do, with what it was minus row 1. Just the same as algebraic that said, how can I knock out these x's? Just subtract them. So remember, this, still re this doesn't refer to this. This refers to what you had. So 1 take away 1, 0, because that's what you want. Negative 7 plus 2. Negative, very handy. Negative 5. Negative 4, take away 1. Negative 5. 9, take away 4, 5. Now, doing that, carrying out the elementary row operations to get two leading zeros heading towards upper triangular form gets you the second mark. There's only one more stage left now. I'm leaving row 1 alone. And... At the same time, I think I'll change this one. You don't need to. This row two can be simplified. So I'm going to take this row two and replace it with a fifth of itself, just to get simpler numbers. So that means I'll have zero, one, negative one, negative one. 
Now, this doesn't affect what I'm going to write here, because these don't refer to these particular entries. These refer to what you had. So how can I get that to be a zero? Easy, just add them. So row three I'll replace with row three, add on row two. So obviously zero and zero is zero. Negative five and five is zero. Negative five, negative five is negative 10, and that's back to zero. Now doing that, get using elementary row operations, you don't need to do, have done this one, to get it into upper triangular form. That's a mark, now it's just finish it off. Remember, these are the coefficients of these variables. So what does this say? This says negative 10z, that's a value, equals, oh, that caught my eye over there, equals zero. So in other words, z equals zero. Feed it back up, that one means you've got a y. That says take away a z, which is a zero, and that should come to a negative one. Well, that just means y is negative one. That says I've got one lot of x minus two lots of y, but y is negative one, plus one lot of z, but z is zero, and that should come to four. Well, that just says x equals plus two away from that, x equals two. I'll just put them again into order. So x equals two, y equals negative one, z equals zero, and there's the final mark. The handy thing about this particular question, which makes it particularly easy, is you've got a definite answer. It's not like the ones where you end up with parametric equations and or so on. Because what you can do here is you can check if it's right and then you know you've got your four marks. Because if those are the correct answers, this should work. We could also just do it here. But I'm just, since I've written that, I'll just write it here. So if you're saying that that's two, that's one, negative one, and that's zero, well, that makes it even easier because that just knocks out this. I've just got to check if that works. So I've got two, but that'll be plus two is four. Yep. I've got four, but take away one is three. Yep. I've got two, but that'll be plus seven is nine. So it's all done.